Okay, the first test of this um, Osmo Pocket 3, the DGI, DJI camera. Uh, I've got active tracking engaged, so there we go. <laughs> cool, man. Um, currently, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Um, I've just got my um, SDR running at the moment. I'm waiting for a satellite to come across so I can the NOAA 19 weather satellite <coughs> so I can grab another weather map. It's going to be uh, it's going to be it's going to pass to the west of me, but it'll give a pretty good show of Western Australia. Um, I grabbed one this morning earlier, and it, was, it passed directly over well, almost directly over Adelaide, and <coughs> That's with a homemade antenna. I ordered a, um, a filter and amplifier. And um, yeah, the first test this morning was the Adelaide Pass. That was really good. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's not a great picture, but I mean, I, I couldn't have picked that up before, so it's definitely an improvement. And um, you can probably just hear the uh, software um, hissing in the background for the um, for the SDR. Let's turn it down a little. It's not yet. It's I've still got a couple of minutes to go before it'll uh, before it'll come over the horizon and I can actually pick up a signal. <coughs> so no, it's quite good. Um, right, we're having issues with the internet at the moment. Um, supposed to be getting the uh, FT, FTTP, which is fibre to the house, connected. Uh, and they've done the preliminary, preliminary work and um, installed the fibre to the outside of the house. They've left the old connection intact, supposedly. And they've got to come back at some point and do the rest of the, the interior wiring with the modem and um, cable routing and stuff. But since they mucked around in the pit and pulled cables, we've been having, uh, well, the old internet service has been crap. It keeps on cutting out. And um, I'm having issues, just losing connection all the time. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try and sort that out today. I'm waiting for Telstra to get back to me, but I don't know. NBN seems to be, <clears throat> Uh, a little, I don't know. <laughs> when I organised for the FTTP to be hooked up, they told me, okay, we'll be there on a certain date. And they turned up the next day, straight after I'd organised everything. And we didn't know they were coming. I wasn't home, I was away, I've been away for a week. So they rocked up. Luckily, the missus was home. And uh, so we got the external stuff done. Um, someone showed up yesterday at the house, knocked on the door. Obviously, I wasn't here then. I was still away, and the missus was at work. Um, I don't know what they wanted yesterday. There was no communication from them at all. I wasn't expecting anyone. Uh, <clears throat> they were supposed to come uh, in t uh, well, tomorrow, actually, to finish the install, but I can't be here, so something has come up last minute. So I've reorganised it for... Um, two weeks from now, which is you know, it's a little pain in the butt. You know, I'd rather get it done and done and dusted. But now we've got this issue where I'm having trouble just using the internet normally like we used to We're on the old service. So I'm waiting for them to get back in touch with me and um, try and resolve this issue. You know, because two weeks until the FTTP is hooked up and I don't want to be putting up with shitty connection until then. So anyway, this uh, satellite is close to coming over the horizon. Okay, here's our uh, satellite coming in. It'll be very soon. It'll start showing up on my SDR. Here we go. You hear that? Alright, I'm going to start recording. Let's change this a little. Uh, we'll zoom in a little. 
and signal, so you can see the signal. There we go, we've got, uh, what is it, 40,000 40, kilohertz bandwidth, and this is the signal which falls inside that 40,000 kilohertz. It's only just popping up over the, um, over the uh, horizon, so the signal's not going to be strong to start with, but it should be quite good when it gets up a little bit. And I haven't looked up the details for this pass. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, let's just have a quick look. All right, loss of signal is 14 minutes. So we got, yeah, we should get a fairly decent uh, file. Now this signal is a lot better than I've had in the past. Um, I've got a new, a new filter and amplifier. And uh, it's it's improved uh, what I'm getting, even with my basic homemade dipole antenna made out of old fencing wire. It's really cleaned it up a lot. All I need to do now is to automate this whole system, and I can just leave the computer running, and it'll every time I. I um, a satellite passes over, you know, obviously I've got to nominate which satellites I want to track, but if one of those satellites passes over, then this will automatically record, process, and then post those images somewhere. But I've got a, a lot of the software I'm working with is old software, it's not supported anymore. Uh, G Predict, I don't know how, um, what the support is like on that. Uh, SDR Sharp, that's fine. That's this program here. Uh, G Predict is the one that does the tracking on the um, on the satellites. So we've got here we go. We've got Noah 19. Noah 18's coming in behind. So that's going to pass to the east of us. That won't be as close to me. Uh, Noah 15 is having issues. Apparently, it's uh, I've I've downloaded a few passes and they've been crap. Uh, there's problems with the antenna on it. Uh, the, the antenna's not orientated properly, so it's not beaming the signals in the right direction. And there's nothing we can do on the ground, so. That is really nice, clean signal. That's, that's the best I've ever had it. I like it. It's worth the money I spent on that filter. I've got alerts set for... Um, the uh, the next satellite satellite uh, no 18 satellite that's 10 minutes from now <coughs> so I think they're going to uh, conflict yeah see that's 10 minutes I might be able to quickly switch over to Noah 18 and just continue recording and that would give me an actually quite a a, a fair pass on the uh, on the Australian continent so. And all I need to do is figure out how to stitch the images together and then I'd have like the Australian continent covered within like 20 minutes start to finish with two satellites. So that would give a fairly accurate um, representation of what the, you know, the, the current sort of cloud layers are and stuff. And these are only the NOAA, the NOAA satellites. If you want to go further out, you've got the geostationary satellites. Um, you need different equipment, different antennas to uh, receive them. I haven't even looked at doing that yet. I'm just sort of like getting the hang of doing this with the NOAA satellites. I do want to get the ADSB uh, up and working so I can um, receive the signals, the tracking signals from uh, aeroplanes flying over. I'd really like to get that working. Um, so I may, may have a crack at that this week while I'm home. And look at that good strong signal. That's wicked. It's really good. Nice. All right, seven minutes, nearly eight minutes until we lose that. And switch straight over to 
no 18. I may even cut, I'll cut this short, I think, once it gets down uh, into the Pacific or the Indian Ocean, uh, getting closer to Antarctica, I'll cut it off and switch over to NOAA 18. There's no point taking photos all the way down to Antarctica. Let's have a look here. Okay, here we have NOAA 19 right here. Here's NOAA 18 coming in. So it's going to come down here somewhere. That will pass mm, just to the west of Adelaide. Uh, and you can see NOAA 19 has passed. It just clipped uh, the coastline up here. Up near uh, Carnarvon Way. So, uh, yeah, loss of signal in 6 minutes 30 seconds. I mean, I was actually able to get an image over Tasmania, and here I am in Western Australia. So that's bad. Here's my shitty little antenna. And it's overcast outside. Oh, Noah 18's coming over Indonesia now. We're starting to get a bit of static come through on Noah 19. It's getting a bit south of us. I don't know, I think that'll do. I'll stop that. We'll go to here. Uh, tell it we want track Noah 18. Okay. Engage. Track L. Alright, we'll start that. Okay, I might just go and tune in, turn the antenna a little. Be back in a second. It's pointing northeast, it should be pointing where it should pop up over the horizon. I might have to go and. Um, Give it a couple of turns during the past since it's it's uh, not going to be coming even remotely close to overhead. Right. Signal. We're getting signal. See it coming through? So, record. This will not be as strong a signal. Uh, it's going to be... Shorter. We only ah oh, thirteen minutes. Well, we had longer. Uh, I think it was about fifteen minutes on the other one. Um, but it's going to be a lot lower on my horizon, so it won't be as good. Uh, well and truly over the Australian continent now. Getting near the red centre. Western Queensland at the moment, but <clears throat> somewhere around Barclay, <laughs> in the Barclay Homestead, the Barclay Radius, or three ways, where all the fires are. We had some big fires go through there in the last week or so. Right, nice signal. It is crossing Highway 1 right now. And very soon, it'll be out over the coast, over the South Australian coast, into the Great Australian Bight. Nice signal. It is almost directly east of me right now. There we go. I'd call that east of me, direct east now. It's out over the ocean. We'll let it go for a bit further. Now, even with all this automation I've got with a filter and G Predict, it's still a little bit of farting about uh, recording it, and then I've got to put it through another program to process it. Um, there is some software, it's old software, it's not supported anymore, called WX2 IMG. 
and um, I had issues running it. So we might call that, I think. There we go. Oh, let's just come back again, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's not what I want. All right, stop. Okay, we want to go to you. And I want to go to you. Okay. Now, this is where it gets a little fiddly, the way I'm doing things at the moment. So that dumps what I've been using to process everything. And this, there's no, well, I don't know if you can automate this or not, but. Uh, we want WAV file. Do you need to do, 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 okay. Simple that. 2048 Is that right? All right, that'll take a little bit of time. Okay, we're now finished processing. Oh, sorry, decoding. <clears throat> now we'll process. We'll process all the images. All right, we got one. Let's have a look at the results. Let's see, this was the NOAA 18 passed pass over Western Australia. All right, it's a raw image, or black, all the images from NOAA are um, black and white. So. That's not a bad image, that. Look at it. You, know. you can see stuff. Let's see how the, the colouring Im images go. Let's see. Keep going. Here we go. Uh, it's normally the outline. It just fills in the outline, the map. It's rain. We've got some rain down here. A bit of rain here, rain here. Some rain there. Maybe a little showers there. Maybe a bit in the inland there. That's not bad. I can't remember what overlay that is. MSA, I don't know if what it was supposed to be. Well, it just shows cloud layer, does it? Probably possibly. Hmm. Which is the prettiest one? One with a cloud in it. There you go. Look at that. I am happy with that result. That's probably. Apart from up here, when we're first coming into uh, over the horizon, uh, and maybe down the bottom, we might have lost some um, data down the bottom, but that is probably one of my best images, I think. And I think it's all down to that filter and uh, amplifier. <clears throat> Let's go and have a look. So, okay. Yes. 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 Here we go. Very poor. I mean, okay, it was it was a long way away. It's um, probably on par with the, the pass that went over Adelaide that I got earlier this morning. Um, quality is certainly no worse, which is totally understandable. There you go, it was getting a little bit overcast over there. So, and up around, um, oh, I'm guessing, yeah, there's rocks up there somewhere. Let's have a look. Do anything else out of it? All right. There we go, rainfall. But there you go. Nice. Nice. I'm quite pleased with that. Definitely like the uh, the other satellite, the NOAA 19. 
that was a really nice image. Uh, this one, not as good image, but a lot further yeah. away and not as high in the not as high in the sky. The elevation was a lot lower, so the reception is difficult. Plus, I'm overcast here. Uh, there's a cloud out there, which is going to interfere with the signal. Overall, though, I am happy with that filter. Uh, I'm happy with the results I'm getting now. If I can improve my antenna with a um, there's a, what is it, QFH antenna or something like I think it's called QFH. Uh, that may give me better results. It'll definitely mean that I won't have to turn the antenna when I'm, the, the, well, I won't have to turn the dipole when I'm um, trying to track a satellite that's further away from me. Um, with the dipole, if something's passing directly overhead or close to it directly overhead, I've it looks like I won't even need to track it. I won't even need to turn the antenna. I just have it set up so it's, it is pointing at the horizon where the where the satellite should rise, and then the satellite should just pass straight over and behind the antenna, and I should pick up signal all the way. Um, but when it's off to the east or off to the west, and it's only like 18 degrees above the horizon, uh, yeah, there's a fair bit of fair bit of um, Horizon there, which I've got to like. If I track, if I turn the antenna two, you know, two or three times during the pass, I'll get uh, get better results. So yeah. Anyway, I'm happy with that. Uh, I've got to go and do some work, so um, stop this dog barking and um, do all that sort of stuff I do when I'm on my days off at home.